<laughs> I'd like you fellas to imagine you're on your way to pick up your girlfriend for a very hot date. You open the door and your girlfriend looks like this. Now, you're embarrassed, aren't you? You're ashamed, admit it. You don't want to take her out anymore. You're embarrassed to even be seen with her. Now imagine, you're on your way to pick your girlfriend up for a hot date. You open the door and she looks like this. Oh. Man, is it getting hot in here? <laughs> you're excited to take your date out and you can't wait to be seen with her and show her off. She looks good. Oh, yeah. Now girls, you wake up in the morning and your hair is perfect straight from the night before, or it's hair is cursed overnight. You know it's going to be a good day, especially when you don't have time to do anything about it. Now imagine you wake up in the morning and your hair is frizzy all over the place. It's going to be a bad day. Your mood just changed, right? Although we are not experts on the by any means on the subject of hair, Larissa and I feel qualified to talk to you about this because we are females and we have hair. <laughs> Throughout the years, we've picked up many tips and tricks for helping, you keep, for helping keep our hair healthy. I grew up with four sisters and I was constantly helping them wash, dry, shampoo, straighten or curl their hair. And through trial and error, I have learned what is good, harmful, and just weird. For example, washing your hair is a good thing. Dyeing your hair from a box, although it's cheap, is very harmful to your hair. And the weirdest thing I have ever heard or seen is washing your hair with eggs. My best friend has the shiniest, silkiest hair I have ever seen, and she credits it to the fact that she washes her hair with eggs. However, before you jump in the shower with a carton full of eggs, you may need to know that you're not supposed to wash your hair with hot water. My little sister um, heard that washing your hair with eggs makes your hair shiny, so she jumped in the shower with a carton full of eggs, cracked them open on her head, and turned the water to hot. She jumped out of the shower quickly as she ended up with fried eggs in her hand. <laughs> <laughs> now how to take care of your hair. It's pretty simple and it doesn't take too long to do it. Just take like 10 minutes of your day to wash your hair. It's going to look healthy and the sensation after is just really good. Now shampooing your hair every day creates like a mess of storage uh, of pathogens. It's a disease causing bacteria. But please don't use the kind of shampoo that is like you can use your hair dry. You know, you apply the hair to shower. It's really bad for your hair. Uh, and for you to have, if you have damage or dry hair, yes, you still can wash your hair every day. Just pay attention to the shampoo that you use. Now, how to avoid the dandruff? Dandruff is something very common on kids, but you still can get it out of it. The symptoms are characterized by flaking and itchy scalp. Don't use this one of the common, most common dermatological conditions and your cause is not common. But fortunately, there's not something, something you can do to reduce the risk of getting it. And effective treatments are available according to quick health. Number one, eat healthy. It's going to make you look good and your hair more healthy. And I know it's kind of hard for the girls and some guys are a bit like mama. <laughs> not to use like hairspray all the time. No, no. But like it's really bad for your hair, so don't do hair well. And wash, wash your hair from you. If you wash like this sort of day, it's going to be good for you. And but you can take all these precautions if you get better. Like you have shampoo that you can use to like drink. And if it's not working, it just all of you always get shampoo. All right, so when you take care of your hair, you're more likely, if you don't take care of your hair, you're more likely to experience things like dandruff and lice. Oh. So um, with lice, not only does it affect you, but it also affects everyone you come in contact with. Last summer, I was coaching my little sister's baseball team, and one of the girls came to a game, and she forgot to mention that she had lice. And um, with the baseball team, all the girls share helmets. And stuff. So, lice can be transferred with hairbrushes, hats, or anything. So, needless to say, I had a few parents who were rather upset with discovering lice in their child's hair. Um, a few facts about lice. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, there are 6 to 12 million lice infestations every year. The main symptom of lice is an itchy head as lice are leaving saliva on your scalp as they drink your blood. 
much like a mosquito does. The most common way to tell if you have lynx is to actually see them crawling around on your scalp, but they are very hard to find as they can crawl up to 30 centimeters in an hour, and they can be up to 3 millimeters in size, which is just a step. Um, the most common way to prevent lice is to simply wash your hair. If you don't wash your hair often and you have a dirty head, you are 10 times more likely to get lice. And oddly enough, the treatment for lice is simply um, a special shampoo. It's called lice shampoo. Um, but if you're feeling creative, uh, one home remedy that I have heard that works is to take a jar full of mayo and smother it all over your head, and it scares the lice right out of there. Now for the guys. I got into shockwave style with director Michael Douglas. There's like five mistakes that guys make when it comes to their hair. The first one is that they don't drink the shampoo completely off your hair. You're not going to make it any bigger again. You have to use it at all. Take it all off. If you don't do that, the dirty in your hair is going to like keep in there. And it's going to make it look like as if you like two or three days. You have to always keep washing. And the second one, I have a question. Uh, you. Oh. When you put a product in your hair, like a nose or hand spray, you do it in your hair like wet or dry. Wet. Wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wrong answer. This is really bad. Like the product doesn't stay that long if you do it with your hair. Yeah, so you want to use product when your hair is damp is okay, but wet, if you put gel or mousse in your hair when, when your hair is wet, it will actually dilute the product and make it not work. And it will give you the appearance of um, dandruff because it will start to dry in your hair and it grows. Um, the third mistake that guys make is when it comes to styling their hair. So according to Michael Douglas, just guys are supposed to spend more, no more than five minutes in front of the mirror. Um, the best way to style a, a guy's hair is to actually get a hair blow dryer and a comb. Yes, a hair dryer. It may seem feminine to be seen blow drying your hair in the morning, but if you're looking to get that perfect style, it's actually the best way to do it. So man up and buy a blow dryer. You don't have to tell it. <laughs> yeah, you can do it in secret. Okay, the fourth mistake that guys make is that they assume that one product will work for everyone. This is not true. Um, to find the perfect gel or mousse for your hair type, or even hairspray, yes, it's not just for girls. Guys can use hairspray too. You should talk to a hairstylist because they know more than we do. And the fifth, and in my opinion, the worst mistake that guys can make is when they are balding. And they try and grow the sides out to cover their bald spots. No, it doesn't look like you're still growing hair there. And yes, we can tell you've combed it over. <laughs> so, so, I'm sure that balding really sucks, but come on guys. Some of the most sexiest men out there are bald, and none of the sexiest men have combers. He doesn't have a hair. He's bald. That's the point. That's it. Oh, okay. I think he just shaved his hair. No, he's bald. No, no, no. Go ahead. <laughs> like, if you have a good hair, like if you wanna go out at night and your hair looks good, your self-esteem is gonna be up. You're gonna feel good about yourself, right? Yeah. So what happens if your hair doesn't look good? Sometimes you don't even want to like go out anymore. You just want to stay at home. So a good hair day means a good night out. So take care of your hair. Oh, no? Okay. According to US Today, the polls show that 44% of humans say their mood has been affected by a bad hair day. A 26% have cried after getting a haircut, like bro. Okay, so one time I was in Colombia, and I don't speak very good Spanish. But um, they had some ladies come over to do our nails, and this one lady was standing behind me, and she was playing with my hair, and my hair was midway down my back. And she picked up a pair of scissors and pulled my hair behind my head and just cut it, so my hair was above my shoulders. And I cried for weeks and weeks and weeks. And I think it just goes to show that like your hair is actually, like people say, it's just hair, but no, it's actually a part of who you are. So if something unexpected like that happens, it's actually a big deal and it really affects the way that you view yourself and even how others view you because they see you looking depressed and sad all the time. The third thing is like when you try to change your style and sometimes I can feel a little messed up. My good friend tried to do that. She has a short hair and she loves Rihanna and she was trying to do the same hair for that Rihanna and her hair was like this short. 
And she was like, she's talking to her hairstylist. And she was like, no, I want to look like this because she looks good. And the hairstylist, okay, this is going to perfectly work for you. And then when she cut it, one part of her was like, that long. And the other one was like, she. I'm not. She cried for a month. And like, even now, she chews like the shrimp and every time she wants to go out. So don't do something like that can damage your self esteem that bad. All right, so now that we've covered the basics of hair care and making sure you don't get lice or for you guys, so you can look like Vin Diesel, I'm going to show you ladies a couple of different ways that you can style your hair. Um, so I'm sure there's tons of different ways that you can style your hair, and I'm just going to show you three. Okay, so I'm sure there's. Um, okay, before I go, there's a couple different things that you can use to curl your hair. Curling hair is the obvious choice. Or some people like to use hair straighteners. I don't because I think hair straighteners are for straightening your hair. There's also a curling rod, which is like a curling iron, only doesn't have a clamp. Or there's the old fashioned curling curlers. Um, so I'm going to show you how to do a wavy curl, a spiral curl, and just like a loose curl. Um, so lots of people spray hairspray their hair at different times. When I curl <laughs> my hair, I like to hairspray it before because it doesn't get crispy and it also holds the curl a lot better. Some people like to spray each individual curl as they're doing it, but that makes the hair really crispy and it's also not very good for the hair. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna start with a wavy beachy look. So. You take a small section of hair, and then you're simply going to wrap it around the curling iron, not using the clamp at all. And you're just going to hold for a few seconds. And then let go. And you can see it's just kind of loose and wavy. <coughs> if you do it all over your head, um, one thing is it might get too curly. If you want to have like the beach look, you just run your hair into it and it looks good. Also, depending on your hair type, if you have loose, thin, fine hair. You don't want to have your curling iron or straightener turned up as hot as it can go because you'll fry your head. But for hair like Larissa's or mine that's really thick and coarse, you can, well I have it turned up all the time. Okay, so there's the beachy wave. Next we're going to do a spiral curl. It's right here. So again, you just take a small section of hair and then this time you're going to open the clip and wrap the hair around the curling iron and close the clip so that it holds it in place more. I find this is more for, well, I like to do this more for formal events because it, it looks more fancy. And you hold it for a few seconds. There's also, if you're scared of burning yourself, you can get curling gloves. So if you, it's actually a true thing, you don't <coughs> burn yourself. Okay, so this you can see, it's kind of like the beach curl, beach curl. But it's more of a spiral curl, and it looks really pretty when it's over your head. Okay, the final curl we're going to do. It's just a loose curl, and you're going to take a small piece of hair again, open the clip, and you're going <coughs> to bring the curling iron down the hair and roll it up. When I do my hair like this, I don't like to roll it all the way up, otherwise you get the Shirley Temple look. So I just <laughs> roll it up about halfway, and let it sit, and then the bottom gets nice and curly. And then you release it. And then you just have kind of like a loose <coughs> curl. It looks really cute when you do all of your hair like that. <laughs> so those are the three types of curls. Now I have to wash my hair. <laughs> so wash your hair. It's going to make you look good and feel good. And it's going to help you to avoid them drop of lives. Also, remember, a good hair day means a good night. That's all. Awesome. Thank <laughs> you.